Cyberpunk's newest Night City Wire livestream has concluded and honestly, I don't even know where to start. Now that you've had a brief glimpse here, a quick summary of everything that was thrown our way during the Night City Wire, let's delve into this video and examine each segment in more detail. We'll discuss what we witnessed or, if you haven't seen it yet, what I observed and provide a concise recap. But if you were there watching it live, please drop me a comment about your impressions. What do you think of what you saw? How do you believe update 2.0 will be and also the Phantom Liberty expansion? I'm really curious to know your thoughts after this Night City Wire. If you're generally interested in lots of content on Cyberpunk Update 2.0 and Phantom Liberty, be sure to subscribe and activate notifications so you don't miss any videos. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But now let's dive right into the recap. We received a ton of information, especially about Idris Elba and his character Solomon Reed. This provided us with cool insights into the story without giving away major spoilers. It basically just clarified the whole setting and I thought that was brilliant. All of this was showcased through a cinematic trailer and the quality was absolutely astounding. Truly incredible, it looks absolutely fantastic. The entire style is totally my jam and this trailer completely captivated me. After the trailer, Idris Elba sat down and re-watched the trailer with us, essentially breaking it down for us. I think this is such a cool format and well executed, he provided some background on his experience throughout the process, how he felt about the production and what it was like to act for a digital character. I love such behind the scenes insights, I always find them super interesting, so naturally both the trailer and the analysis were right up my alley, laying the foundation for an excellent Night City Wire event. If you haven't seen the trailer yet, I'll play it for you now. If you'd like to skip it, you can either use the timestamps in the video description or the timecode displayed on screen. Government's sealing a deal. I told you. You're the president's favorite. Are you gonna walk out of this on a red carpet? Yeah, sure. Hey, you deserve it. I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for you. You know what I'm thinking about right now? Tell me. Taco stand back home. First thing I'm gonna do when I get off this train is head right there. I swear those quesadillas come to me in my dreams. Place sure sounds tasty. Uh, yeah. You were the one that took me there in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember now. Well, listen, when this is all over, you gotta take a break, you hear me?
So me, you want a pill? So me. Excuse me, Madam President. Pill? It's going to be a long flight. No, thank you. I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for you. Summarizing the last three minutes as well as Idris Elba did would be quite a challenge for me, so here's what he had to say. Jeez. Now that is a good trailer. I just have to agree. The script, the story of the trailer is once again top notch. Just from this trailer it becomes evident why CDPR are the undisputed masters of character development in video games. Such multidimensional individuals and psychologically complex and intriguing protagonists and antagonists are rarely found in video games. I mean, how intense is it that Songbird, the netrunner who is essentially Idris Elba aka Solomon Reed's prodigy, betrays him for reasons yet unknown to us and is essentially responsible for his presumed death? Just this sequence of scenes in the trailer, the confusion on Solomon's face when Songbird stops responding, the tear in her eye as she locks the carriage, and then the anger and despair on Solomon's face when he realizes he's been betrayed. Fast forward 7 years and V is right in the thick of it and this super agent, whose life was more or less ruined, is supposedly our only hope of getting out of Darktown alive. That's not just a little bit of powder keg, it's like sitting on an ammunition depot, packed to the brim, ready to go off. I'm eagerly awaiting how this plot unfolds in the expansion and how we manage to extricate ourselves from this mess, hopefully with just a minor bruise or perhaps even a cure for our impending doom. But as always, every character has their own motivations and backgrounds, each playing their own game. In the end, we really don't know who to trust, who to collaborate with and who's just out to deceive us. When in doubt, probably everyone. That's a brief insight into the setting and story of Phantom Liberty and the cinematic trailer. Following that, we truly got an earful. And anyone who's played Cyberpunk 2077 knows just how crucial music is in Cyberpunk's universe and in the main game. Phantom Liberty is no different in this respect. Not only will there be a new score, meaning a new official soundtrack composed by the same team behind the main's game music, But there will also be three new radio stations, Dark Star, Impulse and Growl FM. Each has its own distinct flavor. Dark Star features music from all over the world, aptly fitting the dystopian future. Impulse will be the station where Idris Elba's electro DJ set will air, which I must say is quite intriguing, and Growl FM is a compilation of various creations and submissions from you, the community. What's cool is that you can already listen to the official soundtrack on all major streaming platforms. As a special treat, it also includes two tracks where Idris Elba raps. I've had a sneak peek, or rather a listen, and I must say the music is simply phenomenal once again. I'm genuinely excited to experience it in-game. And in the next segment of the Night City Wire, we delved into the gameplay section, arguably the part that most of you and certainly I am keenly interested in. Update 2.0 is basically on the horizon and it brings about significant changes to the game. All attribute categories and skills have undergone a major overhaul. Apparently there are now many more skills that are actual actions rather than just percentage based stat boosts, which is undeniably very good. Combined with the new relic abilities, this is expected to facilitate powerful and diverse builds. And of course, they showed us some. First, let's take a look at the Bullet Time Ninja. This is one of the builds I played even in vanilla Cyberpunk and it's one of my absolute favorites. This build heavily leans into the katana and close combat and now we have many more options thanks to the greatly enhanced movement with dash and air dash. Furthermore, with our katana we can now deflect bullets and send them hurtling back at enemies. Naturally, this build pairs wonderfully with the Mantis Blades. If you're low on health, simply impale your enemies with a finishing move to recover some vitality. And here's also a great combination of perks. 
For starters, you can leap off your motorcycle, then use Air Dash to close in on your enemies and activate Kerensikov in mid-air, laying waste to your foes with a barrage of bullets in slow motion as you descend. Essentially, it's the same build we have now in Cyberpunk, but amplified tenfold. Next up, they introduced us to the hack and slash Netrunner. Netrunning or hacking has now been enhanced even more than in the base game. Now you can chain up to four quick hacks consecutively on a single target, initiating a lethal sequence of hacks that can decimate entire groups of enemies in the blink of an eye. Pair this with the mono wire and you've got a hacker who can dominate both through his hacks and in close combat. With the mono wire, you can also spread your hacks across multiple enemies. But personally, my absolute favorite feature has to be the ability to control cars. You can essentially turn a parked car into a ticking time bomb and remotely drive it straight into your adversaries. Pure genius. For those who love diving headfirst into crowds of enemies, the Savage Slugger solo build is the ideal choice. This build primarily focuses on close combat, heavy two-handed weapons and sheer brute force. You can either charge at your enemies like a complete madman, knocking them over with sheer momentum or leap straight into their ranks with a crushing hammer blow. While that's all well and good, I believe the standout perk of this build is the one that lets you effortlessly lift enemies off the ground and hurl them at others. I mean, how awesome is that? It goes without saying that this build is perfectly complemented by close combat weapons like shotguns and if that's not enough, you can whip out your new relic skill amplified gorilla arms and promptly punch your enemies into orbit. Absolutely wild. And when update 2.0 is released, all players will have the opportunity to reallocate all their attribute and skill points once. To be well prepared for this moment and avoid making suboptimal choices, there is now an official build planner from CDPR available for players to get a sense of the direction they might want to take. You can find the link to this in the sources below in the video description. Enjoy crafting your build. Now a brief note about the availability of various features. The overhaul of attributes and skill points is part of update 2.0. This means that any player who owns the base game and plays on current gen consoles or PC can download and make use of the update. However, the new relic skills are a part of the Phantom Liberty expansion and are only accessible to players who pay 30 bucks for this DLC. To make it absolutely clear, update 2.0 and Phantom Liberty will only be released for current gen consoles and PC, not for PS4 or Xbox One. The Phantom Liberty expansion, as we already know, will be released on September 26th. The update 2.0 will arrive a bit earlier and now we have a release date for it. From September 21st, you can download and start playing update 2.0. So if you want to start a new character with update 2.0, you'll have 5 days to play at least until the Voodoo Boys mission. Only from this point in the main story will the new campaign become accessible. Depending on how much time you actually have to play during these 5 days, I'd maybe even advise you to start a new character now and play up to that point in advance. Alternatively, when the update drops, you can jump into the expansion with an older character and an old save file. If you're already beyond that point or even finished with the main game. Either way, works just fine. But understandably, if you feel a bit burned by CDPR and decide that you don't want to pre-order and are reluctant to trust blindly again, then that's firstly completely valid and secondly a wise move. Because on September 20th the review embargo for Phantom Liberty lifts. So a day before update 2.0 even releases and roughly a week before Phantom Liberty's launch, you'll already know what the press and some content creators have to say about it. Of course, you can also stay updated right here on my channel. I will continue to report on everything, so I'd appreciate if you'd stick around with a subscription. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be a great way to show your support. But that's all from me for now. I hope you all have an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one.